we compared four different types of loans and talked about the lease cost as well as liquidity. And today, we're going to talk about comparing home mortgage loans. This is more of just a little application of what you've learned now in time value of money to apply it specifically to a problem that every one of you will face in some form or another. Looking at closing costs and points and also looking at the impact of a loan prepayment. In other words, if you take out a 30-year home mortgage but you move to another town or you want to move to a bigger house, you're going to sell that house you know, maybe in five years. What impact does that have on the points and the interest rate that you choose. The reading assignment is still in chapter 14. However, the uh, lecture material will be in chapter 2. So we're going all the way from 14 back to chapter 2, where we're going to cover managerial goals. And also in chapter 8, it'll be helpful if you look at pages 219 and 228. Okay, this is the problem. We're going to look at purchasing a starter home for $120,000 and we're going to assume that we have $20,000 for a down payment. We're going to borrow $100,000 but we're looking at two different loans. Now we could look at n number of loans. We're keeping it simple just between bank A or bank B and this is the information that's been provided. In both cases we're going to borrow $100,000. Bank A, the contractual rate is seven and a half percent, but bank B is a seven and a quarter. So we see that contractually, the rate for bank B is lower. These are monthly payments, which is very typical for home mortgages. For this problem, we're going to assume a 30 year life of the loan. We could have gone 15 year or 10 year, but we'll just keep it at 30. The method of payment is a fully amortized monthly loans. The closing cost for each of these is we're assuming 2000 typical loans here in town, depending on whether you have to pay for a survey or not, anywhere from $2,600 to $3,000. Although there are some lenders that have specials that pay some of those costs for you. Okay, the uh, points, which is basically a prepaid interest. That point is a percent. Instead of a percent, they call it a point, but that point, just think of that's just a percent. A quarter percent or quarter point in bank A and bank B, you have to pay up front a one and a half points or one and a half percent interest up front. And thus you see the trade-off, hopefully, is that for bank A, you have a higher interest rate, but you have a lower prepaid interest. Whereas bank B, you have a lower interest rate, but you have a higher prepaid interest up front. And that's the trade-off. And so how do you determine which is better? That's what we're looking at today. And anytime you take out a loan, you have that choice. Any lender you work with on a home mortgage, if you want to pay a higher points, origination fees, or discount points, they'll lower your rate. Now looking at the closing cost, you have the appraisals, credit checks, legal services, title insurance, loan fees, surveys, there's bank fees, there's a whole two pages of things that I could put on the screen that could possibly be charged there. The points, I've already talked about it, is a percent of the principal paid as prepaid interest. You know, when you hear points, it's just a prepaid interest. And looking at this, where we have this PPI is the prepaid interest, where this P, I put an underline under it so it clearly distinguish it from the big P, is the points or the percent that you'll pay. And of course, the big P is the loan principal. This prepaid interest is just simply the points or interest multiplied by the amount of money that you're going to borrow. Nothing real complex about that, but yet you've seen it as part of the life of a home mortgage. Okay, let's assume that like in the PCA that you can borrow money to pay for your closing costs and points. In other words, you have $10,000 to put down and that's it. If you got to pay another $3,000 or $2,000 for the points in the closing costs, we're going to assume that you can borrow that. It's going to increase the amount of money that you borrow. You're going to borrow more than the $100,000 because you don't have any more cash to put into that. That's the assumption that we're making. So we've already defined P. Let's let this L represent like we did with the PCA. This is the actual amount of money that you need to buy that house. 
its net again of your closing costs and points. And let's let CC represent the closing cost. And then the amount of actual money that's on the note that you borrow is the loan amount that you needed, this $100,000, plus any prepaid interest due to the points, plus any closing cost, because we assume that you can borrow that. Okay, again, we have this circular problem, because what you have is, is that if you're going to borrow the points, that's going to increase your principal, that's going to increase your points, that's going to increase your principal, that increases your points, and you get in this circular problem again. And we're going to solve it the same way by recognizing or substituting in this prepaid interest is simply the principal multiplied by the points. So we're just substituting into that equation. Then again, we're going to subtract that from both sides. Then we're going to factor out the P that's in both components of the left-hand side. And then again, we're going to divide both sides by this one minus the points. And we have our answer. And to check it again, we look at it and we say, well, how much do we need to borrow? We need $100,000 plus 2,000 closing costs, plus we're paying a quarter point. And it shows then that we need to borrow not $100,000, but we need to borrow $102,255 to cover the closing cost and the points. To make sure we're doing this right, the prepaid interest is a quarter percent times our principal amount of this 102,2555. So we have to pay upfront interest of $255. We said we needed $100,000 to buy that house. We borrowed 102,255. We have to pay $2,000 to cover the closing costs, plus we have to pay the bank $255 for prepaid interest. And sure enough, that gives us a net of the $100,000 that we needed to buy the house. Looking at bank A, where we take this information now and put it in the uh, timeline, we need to know the loan payment. We said that we need to borrow $102,255. We said it was going to be a 30 years monthly payment, so 30 years times monthly payments of 12 means that we have 360 payments. Since it's a monthly payment, and we said if you look back at the data sheet, this bank A was going to charge 7.5%. Since it's monthly payments, the monthly rate is 0.625%, which we put here. So in our calculators, we would put 360 N, 0.625% I. We would put $102,255 as our present value, zero out the future value, compute the payment, and we would get $714.99. This means then if we buy this house and we take the loan or we obtain the loan from bank A, that means our principal and interest payments per month is going to be $714.99. Now just as a side note, your payment's going to be more than that because you'll probably escrow your taxes and insurance, so you'd probably have to tag another $300 on top of that. This $120,000 home, you would be likely paying a little over $1,000 a month. Of that, $714.99 is the uh, principal and interest. We take that information, the principal of 12255, our monthly payment for the 360 periods is $714.99. Our closing cost was assumed to be $2,000 and we calculated our points to be $255. So our net, sure enough, we bring back the $100,000. We bring that $100,000 home at closing to buy the house, and then we have this net of $714.99. So what's our next step? We're gonna compare costs. We're gonna calculate what? The actuarial rate. And what's the actuarial rate? We're gonna find the present value of the cash inflows that is equal to the present value of the cash outflows. When we show th this next equation, look at that bottom line that it was on that previous slide where the left-hand side is the present value of cash inflows and the right-hand side is the present value of cash outflows. And since the payments are uniform, this makes it very easy, right? Okay, we're finding the rate that makes those two equations equal. 
and we can go to our calculator from the last equation in your calculator. All you have to do is replace the present value with $100,000 and then calculate the R. And it comes out to 0.644%. Now that's monthly. So to get the annual percentage rate, you take the actuarial rate or the monthly rate, multiply it by the 12 conversion periods per year, and it comes out to 7.7729%. Now this question down here is just a flag to say that what you put in the closing cost, you have to decide that. The government has strict regulations of what can go in that and can't go in that, but you can calculate your APR based on what you think are the true costs of that loan. Okay, so we've calculated the actuarial rate and the APR for bank A. Now let's go to bank B where we recall has a lower contractual rate but a higher prepaid interest or points. In this particular case, we plug into our formula. We still need $100,000. We've kept the closing cost the same. But notice in this case, instead of a quarter percent, we have one and a half percent prepaid interest. So the amount of money that we're borrowing is actually more. We're going to have to borrow $103,553. The uh, prepaid interest on this loan is the 1.5% times the uh, principal that we just calculated, and it comes out to be $1,553. That is a money that would have to be paid at closing before you take possession of that property. Looking again at the uh, cash flows, in this particular case, everything's the same as bank A, except the principal is more, the uh, interest rate is lower. The uh, number of periods is the same. We can't put that in our calculator, and we see that our payment is somewhat lower with bank B than bank A because of the lower rate. So if we put this again into our chart, and we see again that we're borrowing $100,000, and we have our principal and interest payment of 706.41 over the 360 years. Again, calculating the actuarial rate, you can see again, all we need to do is replace in our calculators the uh, present value to $100,000 and calculate the R. And that becomes 0.6337%. Calculating the APR, we simply multiply again the actuarial rate by 12, so it comes out to 7.6%. And now we've completed the chart. So now with these charts together, if you were to keep this loan for 30 years, which bank would you go with? B has a lower interest rate, APR, than bank A. So under the assumptions that we have made, you would go with bank B because it has a lower annual percentage rate. So we choose bank B. Now what's the uh, total interest paid to bank B over the 30 years? Okay, the total interest is total payments minus the principal, right? Well, the total payments for bank B is the $706.40 times the 360 payments. So we are actually paying in total payments $254,309. So for that $120,000 house, over 30 year payments, you're over doubling the cost of that house you're paying to the bank. But how much of that's interest? Well, the principal is your loan principal minus your prepaid points. So you have the 103,553 minus these prepaid interests. That was the one and a half times the 103,553, if you look back in your notes, which we basically were saying we borrowed $102,000. We borrowed the $100,000 for the house, $2,000 for the closing costs. So we take that amount of total payments, we subtract out the principal amount, and it comes out to be 152309 So what does that tell you? That you basically, in interest alone, you paid one and a half times the mortgage amount.